Good afternoon, everybody. Colin here with TechOut. Today I picked up my Razer phone, um, and I just wanted to go over some of the things I love about it and some of the things I hate about it, and some of the issues I've had so far um, within my first few hours of usage. So um, this isn't going to be a full review. Like I said, I've only used it for a few hours, but these are some of the things that I've noticed right off the bat after switching from my OnePlus 6 um, and using an iPhone 10 as well. Um, so I have my OnePlus 6 right here. Great, great phone. Love that phone. Um, these are the two main phones that I've wanted to pick up sw uh, since switching to a GSM carrier that supports both of them. And so far, um, the Razer phone feels very, very good in the hand. I love typing on it and that kind of stuff. But there are a couple issues I've had with it so far, such as the notification LED doesn't seem to be working. Um, there are settings for it, so I don't know um, why that it's not coming up. Um, it, there is a blink light and a low battery light option, um, but I can't seem to get it to show up anywhere in any apps, uh, Textra, Instagram. All those apps that would flash the notification LED on my OnePlus 6 just aren't doing anything. And I haven't figured out why yet. I posted something on XDA to see if anybody knows. I have heard of some issues on it uh, with it on 7.1.1, but my phone did upgrade to 8.1 when I um, during setup. It did the software upgrade, so we're on Oreo 8.1, and I haven't seen any notification light issues in that. I don't even know where the notification light on the phone is. Some people say it's up here. Um, some people say it's on the bottom of the phone. Um, so I'm not too sure about that. If any of you guys have the Razer phone and you have issues with your notification light or your notification light is working, go ahead and let me know down in the comments below um, and maybe we'll be able to figure that out. So that's one thing. The other thing is the display brightness for a phone like this just isn't there. Um, you know, this is a gaming phone. It has the the 120 hertz refresh rate screen. I leave it on 90, which is what it comes at um, out of the box just because it saves a little bit of battery life not refreshing the screen all the time not running it at that higher refresh rate um, I don't do a lot of gaming on this phone this is more like of a, a content consumption device like YouTube and stuff like that um, which it does perform very well at the phone does have 8 gigabytes of RAM with the Snapdragon 835 processor so the processor is about a generation old but with that 8 gigabytes of RAM you still definitely have plenty of power um, but the display brightness, I have it set almost to max brightness, it's at 82%. And when you adjust it, there's really no, um, no noticeable change in brightness after about, I'd say, 70%, 60 or 70%. There's really no noticeable change in brightness, and this is one of the dimmest smartphone displays um, at 223 nits that I've seen in a while um, compared to something like an OLED panel. So if you're coming from a device with an, with an OLED panel or an AMOLED panel, um, definitely going to be a dimmer screen. Definitely going to be something that's harder to see in sunlight. Battery life though um, is supposed to be really good. Like I said, I can't really review that. I've only used it for a couple hours, um, an hour at the most. So I'm not going to say anything about that yet. But the 400, the 4000 milliamp hour battery has been holding um, up pretty well over the past hour. Um, I did charge it up to about 90% and we're about 85% right now um, after setup and all that kind of stuff. So battery life seems to be pretty good. Um, it does come with Dolby Atmos, which is really nice, um, something really nice to see on a smartphone. I don't mind the, the top bezel here and the chin. Um, the screen bezel on the sides are pretty thin. Um, and when you're holding it like this, trying to play a game or watch um, a movie or YouTube or whatever, that does make it really nice to hold. Um, with these speaker grills here, it kind of gives you a textured surface to hold on to as well. Um, you do have a fingerprint sensor right there on the power button, which is nice. All the buttons on the device are in the middle of the side, so you have the power button and fingerprint sensor right there, and you have the volume up and down right here. So being in the middle, if you're holding your device like this, um, playing a game, you're, you're racing or something like that, and you're twisting your phone back and forth, um, trying to play your game, you're not accidentally hitting the volume button or the power button, um, or anything like that, so you don't have to worry about those getting in the way, which is very, very nice. Um, I, I like the placement of those buttons um, when you're holding your device like this as well. You have easy access to both of those buttons, and you can easily unlock your phone. Fingerprint sensor works great. Most of the time, it unlocks right away. You do have double tap to wake if you do want to... Um, you know, just check your notifications or something like that without unlocking your device. You can enable that. That way when you put your finger on the um, home button or the fingerprint sensor, it doesn't unlock right away. 
so you can see it unlock right there. Um, we do have an ambient display as well. We don't have an always on display, but you do have an ambient display, so when you lift your phone up, you do get that. Being that it's not an OLED, um, you know, we can't have an always on display because it would use way too much battery life. But overall, first impressions of the phone, very, very good. Um, the phone is not by any means thin um, or sleek. It is very boxy, um, a very square design. But for a gaming phone, um, I think that's what most people are going to be looking for. So definitely a great design. It feels really good in the hand. I've been typing on it and stuff like that, doing some YouTube stuff, and it feels really good in the hand. I haven't had any problems with that. Um, it's very easy to grip, especially, like I said, if you're playing a game. Um, Software-wise, we don't have any bloatware on it. It did come with a few games pre-installed, um, but I did go ahead and delete those. We just have a couple things for like Dolby Atmos, um, and then some of the Razer apps that they put on there, um, like files and stuff like that, and camera, uh, clock, all that kind of stuff. And then we do have the the game booster right here, so you can uh, preset games and put them on power save, custom performance, stuff like that. Um, so that is pretty cool. It will show you the battery remaining. Uh, I'm just going to leave it on custom because I don't really, you know, need to uh, do any of that right now. But everything works pretty good. Software, like I said, is really good. It does run Nova Launcher out of the box with a um, custom Razer skin on it. So it's a little bit different, but you get all the Nova Launcher features. Um, it's Nova Launcher Prime. So that is the Razer phone. Um, that's my first impressions, on, first impressions on it. Wait about a week and I'll be doing a um, full in-depth review on it of all the features and all the... Um, the pros and the cons of it, and that kind of stuff. This has been Colin with Tech Out. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments section below. And as always, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe.